Hello everybody, Jim here. And as you can see, I'm once again in Akiba today. We're gonna do another uh, $50 starter collection video. Uh, this time we're gonna be doing PS1 games and we are gonna go to Super Potato. Many people wonder why, why I would do something like this here, the most expensive shop. Uh, that is exactly why. It's like a worst case scenario kind of thing. Um, with it being the most expensive shop, basically just trying to illustrate that if you can find some cheap games here and get a nice collection started, you can do it pretty much anywhere. Uh, so let's head up to the fourth floor. Let's go get some PlayStation games. Should be fun. All right, so getting started, I was drawn to a section where they had a lot of the Crash Bandicoot games and other various cool stuff, but more importantly, they had a bunch of Rockman games, one of my favorite series, including Battle and Chase, Rockman 8, and the Complete Works games. That's all very cool, but I decided to pick up the classic that is Rockman X4. This is probably my second favorite game in the series, just behind the original Rockman X, and if you ask me, it's one of the best 2D action platformers on the PS1, if not the best, so it's a great early addition to any PS1 collection. You can play as either X or Zero, and they both play very differently from one another, so it's not just a cosmetic difference, also the story and cutscenes change depending on who you're playing as, but the action always remains solid, it's fast paced, it's challenging, and it is a lot of fun, plus there are plenty of power-ups to find, bosses to take on, and the graphics and sound are both amazing. Again, it's a favorite of mine for a reason, and it gets my highest recommendation, especially if you like platformers, and it's being sold here for only 1,408 yen, which it's definitely worth, so it's a no-brainer, it's going into our new collection. As we continue browsing, we can see they have an assortment of different genres, but I sort of had an itch for some cheap puzzle games, and they had quite a few of those, and we first take a look at a copy of Intelligent Cube Final. If you've never played IQ, then you've been missing out because this game is awesome. It can be pretty challenging at first, maybe even frustratingly so, but once you get the hang of the gameplay mechanics, you'll be having a lot of fun. Basically, as blocks come rolling towards you, you trigger little explosions to clear them from the board, but only certain blocks can be cleared. And when you destroy a green block, you can use that space to rack up a nice combo. So like any good puzzle game should be, the premise is very simple. Just don't fall off the board, which is obviously a lot easier said than done. It's not a graphically impressive game or anything, but that doesn't really matter so much because it's so damn fun. And the Japan exclusive final version features additional puzzles and features not included in the original, and I highly recommend it to puzzle game fans, and at only 528 yen, it's still a super affordable game. Sticking with puzzle games for a minute, I also decided to grab a copy of the Taito classic and personal favorite of mine, Puzzle Bobble 2. There are a ton of games in this series, and they all play more or less the same. And again, this is a puzzle game with a super simple premise that is easy to get the hang of, and then you can get a decent challenge when the difficulty starts to ramp up. As bubbles descend from the top of the screen, you fire off bubbles of your own, and by matching up the colors, you clear them from the board. And this is, again, much easier said than done as you'll eventually be expected to line up some pretty tricky shots if you want to keep things moving. 
This console port of the arcade original features a variety of gameplay modes, including a time attack mode that gives you an assortment of puzzles to complete as quickly as possible, which in addition to the arcade mode and versus mode is a ton of fun, plus the graphics and visuals are super cute and the soundtrack is pretty damn good too. This is another puzzler that if you're starting a PS1 collection, I'd recommend picking up because in addition to being a great game, it's also very affordable here at only 1,078 yen, which makes it a perfect pickup for today's purpose. Next up, I wanted a shooter, and they didn't really have very many to choose from today, but they did have at least one that I knew I could have a good time with, and that's Detana Twinbee Yahoo Deluxe Pack. If you're not familiar with Twinbee, you might know it better as Stinger or Bells and Whistles, but it's a series of top-down shooters developed by Konami, and the main gimmick to the gameplay is the multicolored bells that can be collected for power-ups. Each color has a different effect, and by shooting the bells, you can change their color. Other than that, this is just a simple, straightforward shoot 'em up with tight controls, big boss battles, insanely colorful and cute visuals, and some super catchy soundtracks. This collection includes conversions of two arcade originals, Death to Not Twinbee and Twinbee Yahoo, and both games are awesome, they're simple, challenging, and a lot of fun. Not the best shooters on the console, mind you, but definitely worth playing, and it's being sold here for 1,628 yen, which is very reasonable, and this is a great addition to our new collection. Next up, I found a great Japan-exclusive platformer that I knew I had to pick up at this price, and that's a little game called Hermie Hopperhead. This is a simple and very fun 2D platformer that was published by Sony Interactive, and it was developed by Yukes, who I actually remember best for their pro wrestling games. Here you play as the title character Hermie, and this is about as simple as a platformer gets. You just run to the right, jump on enemies' heads, and collect stars for points and extra lives. A cool little gimmick here is that you can also pick up little multi-colored eggs that will follow you around each stage, and by giving them stars at the end of the stage, they hatch into little creatures that can help you in a variety of ways, like creating platforms to get you across big gaps or even attacking some enemies for you. So that's very cool. Also, a lot of the stages have multiple routes to the end goal, which can take you to a different branching path. So if you want to see every stage in the game, you'll want to play through this one multiple times. Also, this is a pretty good looking game, very nice 2D graphics and some cartoonish character designs and a jazzy soundtrack that is kind of odd really but it's actually very fitting to this game overall this is a very enjoyable platformer that unfortunately never got a release outside of japan so it's a good pick if you're starting a japanese ps1 collection and at only 1408 yen it's a very affordable import Next up, a game that was definitely not a Japanese exclusive, uh, but who cares because it's a lot of fun, and that's Mina no Golf 2. If you're not familiar with that title, you'll probably know this game better as Hot Shots Golf 2. This was actually the first golf game I ever played thanks to a PlayStation Underground Jam Pack back in the late 90s. I'd always assumed a golf game would be mind-numbingly boring, as that was my impression of golf, but this is the game that changed my mind. The gameplay is very simple and easy to get into, and it basically set the standard for what a good golf game should be, or at least I think it did. I played some other golf games later, and they all felt basically like altered versions of Hot Shots 2. Anyway, not much to say about this one. It's fun, the graphics are kind of quaint, 
and the soundtrack is like super chill this is a great game to relax with on a sunday afternoon for those of us who have no desire to play actual golf and better yet uh, this game obviously sold like hot cakes in japan which is why it's so cheap even here at super potato this game goes for no more than 110 yen so they're basically giving it away you've really got nothing to lose with this one with just a little bit left in my budget i decided to grab one more super cheap game and another japan exclusive and that's macross digital mission vfx this is the first in a series of 3d macross games that unlike some of the other games based on the property this isn't actually a tie-in to the anime but instead it features an original story created just for the game the gameplay itself is pretty cool it's macross so obviously you'll be piloting the transforming fighter ships that can swap back and forth between a jet and a mech suit, both forms controlling differently and having access to a different array of weapons. You've got machine guns, lock-on missiles, you can even do melee attacks in your mech form if you get close enough to your enemies. You can also swap back and forth between a few different camera angles, including a first-person view, and you'll be taking on missions both on Earth and in outer space. Honestly, this isn't the best 3D action game on the console, but it's good enough that if you're going to start a Japanese PS1 collection and you want some games that were exclusive to Japan, but you don't want to spend an exorbitant amount of money, this should be at the top of your list because it's fun, it has some decent graphics, lots of original animated cutscenes, and a pretty good soundtrack as well, and it's another game that is as common as dirt in Japan. So even here at Super Potato, you can pick up a copy right now for 308 yen. And at that price, this one's definitely a no-brainer. And that'll do it seven games in our new PS1 collection, so let's head home for a little bit of a recap. Alright, so here we are back at home safe and sound with our nice big stack of seven PS1 games. And just to recap, we got Rockman X4, amazing game. Puzzle Bobble 2, very fun puzzler. Uh, Me Not No Golf 2, aka Hot Shots Golf 2. Uh, surprisingly, a game I love a lot. A uh, great game. Uh, Macross, uh, Digital Mission VFX, very cool. Um, Intelligent Cube Final, which is uh, another fantastic puzzle game. If you've never played IQ, definitely give it a try. Uh, Hermy Hopperhead. A very cool Japan exclusive platformer, well worth playing if you get the chance. And Detana Twinbee Yaho Deluxe Pack, uh, which is again a very fun compilation of two awesome Konami shooters. And all of those games together ran us 6,468 yen which is uh, right on the money, just under $50. And uh, we got uh, more than half a dozen great games to enjoy. So if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna play some PlayStation games. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know down in the comments what you think of these games and uh, what uh, games you would pick if you were gonna start a PS1 collection today. That being said, thanks for watching everybody and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, goodbye.